Hello everybody, welcome back to IT Security Labs and thank you very much for joining me this late night on Friday and today I have a very interesting machine from Barnhub. I was just looking here and I saw there's this HMS1 machine by Mivec. It's a very interesting machine, it's a hotel management, uh, hospital management system that's being hosted on this machine and our job is to attack the vulnerable machine and get root so if you are interested in following along please go ahead and download this machine from uh, Bounderhub and as soon as you download the machine it should work in VirtualBox just like what I have here and once you power it on get an IP address from your DHCP or run it in Discover and then today I also have my security onion where we'll be detecting the traffic to try to see uh, how vulnerable is this system and can we actually detect when we are doing the attack? So we'll do two things. We'll attack the machine then we'll try to analyze some traffic here as we do the detection. So as you can see, I already generated almost 80,000 events during my little uh, dry run here. But uh, thanks for joining and I'm very excited to actually be doing this. I know this is an unexpected live stream, but it should be fun. I'm using my Kali Linux 2019. It's in under undercover mode, so it looks like Windows, but it's actually not. My machine is running on 192. What is that here? Right here. 38. I think it's on because we are by here. Ninety-six. All right, so it's responding to uh, ping. Is the first thing that I like to do when I get to these machines is I need to run uh, an Nmap scan. Nmap is going to show me what's going on on this machine. And SV minus SC, SV. So Nmap will find the open ports on the system. SB will find the versions of whatever uh, services are running. SC will. Uh, just to uh, use default scripts and then 1 and 2, 168.38, uh, 96, I believe. Actually, let's do all ports by doing that. This should scan our victim machine so we can see what is running on the machine, how can we get in, uh, and maybe we should tell us that. So, thanks again for joining. Uh, let's see what we can do here shouldn't take too long but this is a really really fun machine so if you do the attack using nmap like I'm doing you will notice right away that security onion intrusion detection system should be picking up this traffic right away so let's uh, go to our alerts so here's all the noise that we're generating right now using nmap and of course as you already know this is nmap traffic right here we do have some other traffic, but I believe most of this is NMAP right now. So, this is a lot of noise. Um, if you just joined, we are just attacking this machine here from Bounhub. It's supposed to be an easy machine by Mivek. It was posted uh, just a couple weeks ago. So, oh, I have music going on. Okay. Thanks for that, Mark. Yeah, so my Nmap scan is going right now. Uh, it, will, it will probably take a minute or so. But let's run a full Nmap scan. If you don't want to wait for Nmap, you can just um, run Netcat to see if port 80 is open or any other ports. I'm just going to open a browser here as well so we can uh, see what's going on. Do we have port 80 open? So you can run netcat or you can just go here just open a browser and go to the site it doesn't matter it doesn't look like we do 96.9 no so we have to wait for nmap to run here the easiest way actually if you don't want to wait is to run the top 1000 ports first then you can you can wait for the full results. Okay. 
This will just do the top 1,000 posts so we don't have to wait. Otherwise, we, oh, never mind. The top 1,000 posts are finished. And this is why I do top 1,000 posts. Look, 78 is open. This will not be caught by the top 1,000 posts. So you want to make sure as you do this, uh, you do Nmap with all ports here. So we found port 21 FTP. I like to do this right away. First, anonymous is allowed, I have a version. So two things I need to check right away is, can I exploit that version of FTP and can I do something else with it? So here it is. A denial of service is not going to help me here. I don't want to cause it denial of service for myself. Uh, it doesn't look like I have. I'm looking for remote code execution when I'm doing this. No, 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 this is too. So my version of FTP doesn't seem like there's an easy exploit. So we move on. Anonymous is allowed. So let's go ahead and uh, sign in with Anonymous. FTP 192.168.38.96 Anonymous No password We are in Do we have any data? No Really? So this is empty I, don't, I wonder if we can use it later But Anonymous is allowed but Right away we see that we have nothing in there So Maybe later we can try to upload something in here, but for now, uh, port 21 is open, there's nothing. So we move on. 22 is my last option. I only use 22 if I want to brute force something, or if I see some key SSH keys, or once I get a password. But for now, let me move myself to be round so I can see the full screen here. All right. So for now, we move on from 22. 78 is interesting. It's an Apache server with SSL, open SSL. This is usually a rabbit hole. I usually, I used to spend some time investigating like, oh, it's any of these versions vulnerable. This usually doesn't lead me anyway, unless if I get stuck. So since we have port 7080, so let's go to our browser and check that one out. That's where our website is running. Um, 96. Alright, so 78 is running a website and I can see it's taking me to a login page right away. While this little website is loading, uh, there we go. It's a hospital management system and it's asking me to sign in as admin or as a patient or as the doctor. So our goal here is to really try to break in here into this hospital management system if we can and when I see login pages I try to see if I can sign in but for good measure let's also run our, our good friend Nikto because Nikto also finds something if we get stuck trying to uh, get in using the login page Nikto might find something so let's run Nikto in the background here just in case we find something. Let's go back here. And today I'm going to learn something that I've shown on this channel several times, how to brute force login pages using Burp Suite. It's like one of my favorite things. You can call um, our good friend, I call these two my good friends because I like them. Uh, we can call SQL Map and SQL Map might find something here. But however, it's not allowed for the OSCP exam. So I try to avoid SQL Map. So without using SQL map, we just try to do it manually. How do we break into this admin page? It wants an email address. Um, admin. Why don't we just do that? Maybe it doesn't matter what you put here. Just want to see if this actually errors out. Okay, invalid email or password, okay. So the email has to be valid according to this thing here. So let's close that. 
Um, what is this thing doing? View its page source here. Right click and view the page source. What is this thing really doing? All right, this is what I like. When I see people's names in the source code, I like to do something like this. Now I know the creator, so I can go to Google and say, um, so hotel, man hotel management system. Let's remove his phone number. Let's say Git. Do we have a GitHub page with this source code? I see that here it is, hotel management system. Okay. Um, yeah, that will take us to, to his blog site. It doesn't help us. But you need to go and look it up. We also see that there's a uh, source upload logo. I bet this is after you authenticate. There is an, a logo that needs to be uploaded. So potential uh, file upload uh, vulnerability here if you are if you're very interested in that stuff if you see this that means that there is some way we can upload images uh, other than that we don't see anything so we proceed to try to break into this here we only want to try admin for now but what i want to do is i want to run burp suite so that i can uh, intercept my request so i can actually see what's going on because burp suite is a really wonderful tool this is burp and right now my interception is off. I just fired it up before this thing started. Um, Web comes with its own browser. So this is Google Chrome that comes back with Web. So what I would do is I will copy this and let's put this in the browser that Web is using. So far I'm not intercepting anything, but this is where things get really, really fun quickly so we want to try as admin test at test.com password is test all right before i log in here i would like to intercept this traffic so let's go back to burp interception is on back to the browser why don't we just maximize that right now log in Web should pop up right away. So here's our request. Um, right now, Web thinks that we can, um, we, we, we have to put username of admin and this email here. Uh, let's see. I'll send this to, to uh, Intruder. Intruder is what I, I would like to use. I'll show you a really nice, neat trick to uh, brute force SQL uh, pages using a SQL. So I would like to clear this cookie. I don't want to brute force this. I don't want to brute force whatever. Uh, no, I don't have anything there, but let me clear that as well. I like to brute force this test. I would like to brute force the email, but I don't want this. What I'm going to do, be doing here is a SQL injection. Uh, attack and I'm using sniper here in my payload section I just have um, a nice SQL payloads that I keep handy these ones you can find if you google uh, SQL payloads these ones I use them with web intruder specifically for this work that I'm doing here so I'll paste them here so what this is going to do is it's going to go on our login page and try combination of these payloads and I'll see if the length of the uh, request changes on any of these then I will try and see if it works. This is to prevent you from manually trying admin and or enter and until we find something. This will just do it for us. So let's start the attack right now like that. It will complain that we're using a community chain, but it should pop up a new page here. So what we're doing here, we're seeing status 200. What we're interested in is this length here. Where it changes is where we'll be interested or where it doesn't change. 
So 4875 seems to be the length. It's either they're all working or... Oh, this one is different. What you can do quickly is you can just click on one of the requests that is different for the actions and request in browser. Uh, should we... Let's request in original session and copy. Let's turn verb off. Oh, actually, I, sh I could have. Could have just tried it okay let's paste this one all right it didn't work let's try it again this time i'm going back to my verb results what if this one didn't work but the actual length is the correct one let's do this i can go to action press in browser in current browser session. Let's copy that. I think I need my interception to be on. You know what? I have a better way. Let's let's send this to repeater and see this in real time. We should see whether it succeeded or not within repeater here. So this one failed, and here's the error, invalid email or password. That's interesting. All right, let's go back to our proxy, interception on, let's do it again. Test, oh, you don't want that right away. I'm going to do the request again. Right now my interception is off. Tests, then interception on. Login. Here's my request. Send to intruder. Okay, my payloads. Let's copy our list again. Paste it here. Uh, positions. Positions. So I have the this one and that one. That should work. Oh, I think I'm looking at a different request. This is the one that I want. Let me delete all these to make sure that my intruder is clean. I think I was using the wrong session. So you right click here and send to Intruder. Intruder allows us to set positions and brute force here. So in my payloads, I pasted that. Then in my, in my positions, uh, let's clear all of them. Then highlight the ones that we want. I want the email. And I'll uh, add that. And I want the test my password let's add that all right start the attack this should also get caught by our um intrusion detection system all right i'm seeing the same results here let's see Let's see if we get anything different. I think this one is the one that works. Let's 
the C. And the way we do that is let's send this to repeater. Repeater now allows us to just see if it works or not. And let's send this one. This one, did it succeed or not? Invalid email or password, that's an interesting one. So maybe my payloads are not enough. Let's go and check another one. Let's check one with a different length. This is an interesting one. I don't think that one will work, but let's send this one. Invalid email and password. All right, let's add more uh, SQL payloads here. I don't think my payload list works. Let's see if we can get a bigger payload list because so far we're not getting any hits. Now let me Google it right here. This GitHub page should give us good, good results. And part of, part, of, part of hacking is being able to come in here and without moving on too quickly, testing a few of these things. Want, I just want a list of payloads. Oh, this, this is a lot. Maybe I should stick with the simple ones. These are time based. So you, if you wanted, you can try all these here. But I'm just going to try the ones on top because this is too many. But you have nothing to lose because you're using Burp to do this for you. So I'm just going to use the one on top, first one. Just a very generic one. Let's copy this one. This is not giving us anything. Back to Intruder, my payload section. Let's clear that and paste. This time we have a bigger payload. Let's see what we can find with this. The easiest way is probably to go with, um, what, what is that tool called? Um, SQL map. But we don't want to use SQL map. Oh, this one is right away changing. This one. That's a different length. Let's send this one to repeater. looks like we have a hit this one is a success we don't have any problems with this one so as you can see this one has a different length 5084 the other one are the ones are 875 so this one looks like we can successfully inject payloads in our, our web browser so let's open this one in, in a um, in a in the original session this is how you brute force web web pages using uh, SQL map if you want to test for SQL injection. So let's go back here and try this one. We know it succeeded. Maybe in 
current browser session so we have a hit what if it works we should sign in right away as admin because we're, we're trying the admin page okay. we don't need this anymore wait login success so you have just hacked a web browser for a hospital management system using SQL map so I hope um, by me going through it a couple of times you got a chance to see uh, what worked for us was this list here the, the generic SQL payloads and you can manually do this if you want or you can use SQL map but right now we just use this and we're in the website is um, wherever this is I see a profile look what does the profile look like all right we have a user's email address here the first name and the phone number uh, let's see if, what we can see from this thing let's view doctors so we are already uh, uh, violating some HIPAA stuff here see some doctors here great uh, who are the patients all right and we see the blood type see where they live the email address can i view the report all right the date of birth I'm not interested in this information. I want to get access to the system that is running this server. So I need I need more than what I'm seeing here. I'm looking for a place where I can deal with this. You see this little image here? If I can change that image, this is running PHP. If I can upload images, I should be able to uh, do more here. If we go back, I think that was my when I first did this, when we first opened this browser, yeah, when we, yeah, when we viewed the page source, I saw something to do with uploads, uploads somewhere, uploads somewhere here, profile profile image. So you you can you can go out there and mess with this, but you see that it says profile image is equals to upload image logo. So this is where we are uploading this profile image here we need to figure out how they are doing that so far in the settings we cannot see it so going back to our page source this one doesn't show me anything let's try this the page source while we are signed in no, I, need, I just need the page source was uh, this right here you will get stuck if you don't enumerate further so we, by enumerating we mean looking through all these things here especially comments that might show up here or any settings so far we know that this thing is up uploading here is a comment uh, looks like we have a settings settings span whatever they commented oh here setting.php why did they comment that we are curious so we go back here and we go find out what's there well i cannot go to the, get to those settings by browsing but they are there and looks like it's loading right away you should see a 404 if it's not working looks like we can edit this user in here maori and remember i said i was after there now i can upload a file file upload is gold if you can upload a file on a php site there is a pen test monkey php reverse show you should go and do right away uh, nikto is still out there uh, forget nikto we we are already in there so th this is the php monkey reverse shell you can just google php yeah php Mon <laughs> pentest monkey php reverse shell 
sh.php that's what i named it but i, I think can i just look at um, pendis monkey do i do, do i have a pentest monkey no if you just google it, it it's there i've used this so many times i have it saved here as um sh.php because i don't like to type the whole name so in here you need to change two things your ip address this should be your kali linux then the port it literally says change this in tabs this is what we're going to upload this once uploaded to the victim should give us terminal bash or at least a reverse shell it's just that it will run shell your name minus a so this is what gets caught by uh, intrusion detection systems again this your name here minus a and this id command here was it's run so that when you sign in it will show you the name of who you are signing yes so this is the shell command that will be executed on our victim machine here and uh it will get us bin sh we should get bin bash if you want you can change this to bin bash but we should be able to just get a shell here i'm going to upload this the way it is and i have it in my downloads here so let's go ahead and upload i choose a file uh, in my downloads i have the same php reverse shell you know what let's use burp so we can see what's going on i like to see what's going on so i would i would do this choose file um in my downloads i have it named sh123 it's the same reverse shell that i showed you here in open before i click submit let's um intercept this traffic again using verb so we can see our reverse shell being uploaded all right so here is the pop-up we should see reverse shell right here so this is the full reverse shell that we're just uploading it's probably not smart to have this generic one uh, but hey we, we are just learning here again this is the one that will uh, call back to me so before I, I forward this in repeater here so i can show you I, I need to set up my listener hey matthew what's up man 5353 so let's do a netcat minus alvnp on 5353 well, that's my port i'm just listening for my shell right now so back to burp so once we forward this reverse shell we should be able to trigger it and then um get a reverse shell so the better way is to send this to repeater because then we can do this as many times as we want and we can also see the response here so send that and it looks like it worked or did it let's see this is why I really like burp for uh, these things here yes it did I can tell because it tells me that it was uploaded right here all right so now I can just copy that link what is going to happen here is since this one worked uh, let me send it a couple of times send it again i got my proxy i can just do a forward just to make sure interception off so we're good the payload uploaded correctly and we should be able now to go there to the url and get a ratio very quickly here so going back to the admin panel i copied the link to to where the shell is no that's not the one according to burp my in my um repeater oh i already moved to it did i no let's see it should be in upload image logo sh123.php so let's go there
and you feel like how do you know that i've done this process especially with burp so many times that i know oh wait a second oh when i forwarded it it, it executed it for me <laughs> but this is the that's the path that we were supposed to visit it executed it somehow for me i'm not complaining i'm in here so now we are on the system id we are in here as daemon daemon is not helpful let's stabilize this shell quick and to stabilize the shell i just go to my reverse shells usually i use python this is so we can actually work with the comfortable shell it doesn't change anything really so python is there let's export term so that i can clear my screen this is just um, housekeeping. Now I can clear my screen and I like what I'm seeing here. LS, I already see, um, I don't see anything. Let's go to home. Who do we have? Nivek and Erin. I'm interested. Let's minus LA. Who can I get in? So it looks like I can read stuff in Nivex. Let's here's a local dot text is that a all right we found flag one local dot text in Nivex directory now hey Fabi what's up man now we just need to go to the next step how then do we break from daemon to something interesting i usually put lean peas here but before i do lean peas in my exploitation cheat sheet here i will no in my um enumeration let's just do a let's check for suids So here's a new for Linux. Um, so let's check for SUIDs. That's the first thing I do all the time. And if I find anything, I'll go to GTA 4 bits. And this right here, you need to know what you're looking at. You need to know what's normal and what's not. If you don't, you might <laughs> not be able to find it. Uh, dev now ping mount fuse mount these are usually normal there are things you shouldn't and also look at the user who is running them if the user changes that's a good sign that uh, maybe you, have, you do have an suid like you see daemon can run this ad here so that is interesting right away i don't know what that is i've never seen it but also this user Aaron can run bash uh, that's interesting bash shouldn't be showing up here that often so let's go to GTO 4 bins. And the other day I was just thinking, oh, GTO 4 bins, that's an acronym for some words that I have heard of. The creator must have known. So let's go ahead there and look for bash. How do we use SUIDs with bash and git or with um, when we see it um, there? So we found bash. It's an SUID. It's not sudo. And they say sudo install, whatever that is. Or we can just run bash with minus p. Let's try the easy one instead of the install one. Do I need to install or? No, I, I can just run bash. Yeah. Should be able to run. I don't need to install bash because bash is there. Uh, where's my machine? All right, so let's clear. We're going after bash. Was the reason why I'm saying bash is there is because I know it's there.
So you just need to do a bash minus P according to GTO 4 bits. And remember we were demon. And now we are Aaron, the one who had the SUID set. So we have done a lateral movement from the other person to Aaron. Here we can also run the SUID, but let's check if this person has any pseudo privileges. Wait a second. So. Pseudo minus L won't work here. That's okay. <laughs> What's I need a password? I'm still Aaron though, so that means I can do my more enumeration here. Does Aaron have any documents I might be interested in? Is Aaron? running any you can in, you can bring in lean piece here but I'm just going through a list of simple things is this person running uh, any cron jobs you do the basic things then if you can't find it then call some scripts but looking at cron jobs if they're doing anything funny with cron and maybe they're running a script is root for all you know is good in this case they are actually running a script, a backup script. And we can edit this. Because we're Aaron. So let's go ahead and open it. All right, it's a backup script. So there's two things we can do here. They're not using a wildcard, so we cannot uh, exploit the tar command uh, the way we know, normally do. If they're using a wildcard so we don't have a wildcard however they have what is the backup there, there, there what are they picking up oh. all right let me see if I can actually get a, a real shell. I don't know if this will take us anywhere, but let's do some, a little magic here. So this is the file that we would like to edit. Let's get a simple shell from Google. Uh, is it from Pentest or things? I think it's all things, something like that. Let's let's just grab a simple uh, payloads all things. Here today, I cannot remember. It's payloads all things. Or you can use the one uh, from High on Coffee. It's good as well. But payloads all things does uh, show me really good things. And by the way, as we are doing this, Security Onion is going crazy over here with our let's. Because we were, we were not actually hiding anything. We will look at the alerts here as soon as we're done with the uh, attack. But in the last two hours, this is what we've done so far. A lot of um, alerts, there might be there might be some that are interesting. And I'll show you what you might be looking at as a security analyst here in a second. But from payloads, all things here, let's go to bash, TCP. Let's grab um, first one. So I would like to put this in, 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 our, in our script here. And to do that, we just, I like to use echo because if you try to use nano or <laughs> any of those other text editors, things may not actually work. And then, then let's change this IP address to our Kali. Now 144. All right, so if we put this here, After the, the time that the script is running using cron tab comes, we should get a reverse shell on our machine. And by, by the way, how often is this script running before we get too excited? Oh, 
Oh, it's running every five minutes. So that shouldn't be a problem. So we are going to take this reverse shell line there. After five minutes, you do execute this and you do reach out to our machine. I don't know when five minutes hit for this thing, so I'm going to start a listener right away. Um, 4242, I believe. All right, so we start a listener. We echo this in the script. We should be able to catch the script and see our our one liner there. And I'll explain what this is doing here in a second. So now that we have written this line here, after five minutes, the script is just going to run as this user, who we are already there with this limited shell. And then if it runs after five minutes, it will call here. So we can wait for it or we can go and mess with our um, alerts and come back here after a couple minutes and hopefully the five minutes is going to be soon and we're listening on 4242 and actually let's verify that we have the correct ip address there yeah 30.144 all right so after five minutes we wait and while we wait, we go and look at alerts. So if you are a security analyst, this is where things might be interesting. You'll be looking at, okay, um, first of all, we have a lot of this. What is happening there? I can just do a drill down. I just want to get a closure that this is NMAP. And then move on. And to do that, I go to the Actually, this is not an map. This is our good friend Nikto. Nikto got caught and generated more than uh, NMAP. So that's one way. And we know this is Nikto and it sets a user agent uh, in, in, in its um, request. And here's a user agent. NMAP does the same. GoBuster does the same. So if you run these tools, expect these user agents to be set. If you don't want that to happen, create your own custom scripts. So we don't get caught all right so that was the interesting one let's go and check um our reverse shell that we just created we created a we we're able to get a reverse shell on 5353 so i, I like to just go here the discover in kibana i just want to track my 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 request and by the way while, while this star dot port five three five three it's usually source dot port or destination dot port so i just want to see uh, what it is oh i used the terrible port didn't i 5353 is also used for other things on this network so let's use um oh actually let's check 4242 we just we're just listening for that and here is 4242. We should see a reverse shell. This is uh, from earlier. So this will show you that you actually get caught. And I, I have another one here. Let's go and check if it actually triggered. Yes. So this 4242 right here triggered. And it's because of this cron tab, cron job that we were running uh, every five minutes right here. And we echoed this line and that's what gave us this shell all right so 4242 that's what we used and that also gets caught so if you're a security analyst regardless of which sim solution you're using this is what you'll be looking at uh, in this case this is just a broken um, it just shows us that we did have a successful connection and it's a positive indication that you would like to add to your data Let's go and actually finish this, then we'll go and look at more. Again, pseudo minus L. Can I, since now I have a stable show, I should be able to check. Oh, I can run tar. Great, this is getting easier and easier. GTF beans, you get any answers for me? Did I 
I just use my GTA four beans. Okay. So let's go to GTA four beans and see if we can uh, do a privilege escalation using tar. And this time it's a it's a pseudo. It's not just any SUID. So tar. Pseudo. Uh, if the banner is allowed to run a super user by pseudo, it does not drop into elevated privileges and may be used to access file system. Escalate or maintain privilege as given. Okay, this will give us a bin SH. So, lateral movement. Both cases, uh, the first one was GTA 4 bins with Bash, but it was an SUID. This one is GTA 4 bins with tar and in fact this is the tar exploit that we've shown in before but in this time you see we're setting up a checkpoint a checkpoint in executing it at once so who cares let's just do that i think it worked because if i do an id root who am i i'm root and ls here's our root flag so we became root we got a root flag I would say this is an easy machine for someone who has been doing some uh, capture the flag stuff but it's a very simple machine as you can see first order of business was a very fun uh, SQL injection using web suite where we found well, we brute forced uh, the web login page using SQL map um, I mean uh, burp SQL map was another option but who does SQL map this is the way to do it uh, before you do SQL map and then um, I had made a mistake where I was using a smaller payload and then we found out that we needed the bigger payload here. We probably had more, but I picked the first one that, had, that was different, well, the one that I saw, the or, and this one worked right away. And to do that, I just went here and requested it in, in, in the original session. Web suite will make your life easier. If you see a login page uh, and you need SQL, this is the way to go. In fact, I'm going to see if I can, uh, can I, I will upload, I will update my notes here so that next time I don't run my shortlist. All right, so now my notes have the whole list. This is what I'll be using next time. And of course, it's probably going to repeat some of them there, but I really don't care because I'm using a verb. I also have some machines that, that will show me, uh, like real two. I don't know if this is um, done or not, but where you can see people are using SQL here. But now that we are done with that, let's go and check uh, the noise that we generated. First, reverse shell 4242. We can see that. Next time, I'm not going to use 5353 because uh, it doesn't work. This is the la latest one that we did right here. Okay. Next, let's go to Security Onion here. Let's look at through this for a second. I I'm curious to see our SQL injection. I really want to see our SQL injection. All these are NMAP. I'm just going to use the default alerts that come with security on you to look through everything. In particular, I'm interested in Suricata intrusion detection uh, events. See what we have. Because we made a lot of noise. All right, I like this. Exploits suspected PHP injection command. Well, this is interesting. This could probably, uh, I know who this is. This is um, Nikto. Given the number here, that's definitely Nikto. So we cannot get excited about that one.
I even looked at this, so you are doing this with me. Then the last page. Oh yeah, I like this. If you see PWD in plain text, this is going to show us that well, what commands we ran. So let's start from the beginning. I think I call this one is Nikto. This is a, is a tool. And to know right away is um, we come to the data.decoded. So like I said, Nikto, and we're not even using any version options within Nikto. So we move on because we know that. This one is three. And the rule that fired says possible SQL injection attempt using union select. So since we did a SQL injection today, oh, this is also Nikto trying SQL. Did Nikto tell me that there was? Yeah, this is Nikto trying uh, SQL injection, but you can tell, or maybe Nikto would have shown us the uh, actual commands anyway. Next time I'm not running Nikto. I think I said this last Sunday. <laughs> I still run Nikto today. It's because Nikto is really good. Yeah. Come on, I need to see real data, not from Nikto. If anything, this shows you that this tool, freaking Nikto, gets caught all the time. Use evasion techniques. All right. Looks like every single.